In this video, I will show you how to install Google Tag Manager container on a website. Hey, my name is Julius and welcome to Analytics Mania YouTube channel, where you can learn Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics. And if you want to stay up to date with Google Tag Manager, consider subscribing. To have Google Tag Manager working on a website, you have to install the container code. In many cases, you might need developer's help. And in this video, I will show you the entire process. This video is a part of video series called Google Tag Manager for Beginners. So if this is your first video that you're watching, I highly recommend to check the description of this tutorial to start from the very first lesson instead. Okay, so let's dive in. To install Google Tag Manager, you have to add two Google Tag Manager container snippets to the source code of the website. Usually this job is done by a developer. You can get those two container codes by clicking on the container ID in your Google Tag Manager interface. Click it, and then you will have to send these two codes to a developer. In this video, I will show you an example of how to add these two codes to the source code of the website. Now, keep in mind that this is just an example, and every website might have different content management systems, code base, or something else. So I just wanted to show you this because I want you to get a better idea of how things work, but remember that usually this is done by a developer. So if we read these instructions, you will see that this code must be added somewhere in the head of the website, and this code must be added somewhere in the body of the website. If you don't know yet, website's HTML code is split into two parts, the head part and the body part. Head part is responsible for various settings, loading scripts, meta description, meta keywords, meta title, and so on, while body is responsible for the content. So let's copy the first code. I can just mark this, copy it like that, and then I will go to the content management system of one demo website. And here I am already in the code editor of that website. And then here we have the opening head tag. So this means that this is the beginning of the website head. And here below somewhere, we have the closing head tag. The closing head tag always has this slash right here. Now it's perfectly fine to add Google Tag Manager container code, I mean the first code, before the closing head tag right here, like that. And then after the head ends, we see the opening body tag. It might look like this. On some websites, it might look like this. So below this body tag, it is recommended to add the second code, which is right here. So copy and then paste it right here. Now, the first code is essential for Google Tag Manager to work. So this must be added somewhere in the code. It's recommended to have it in the head, but if your content management system does not allow to add custom codes to the head, it is still fine to add it to the body. But the sooner you load your Google Tag Manager container snippet, the better. And speaking of the body, well, now I'm not going to dive into details, but keep in mind that this is optional. You don't have to add this, but if you add it, then it is recommended to do so right after the opening body tag right here. So this is the opening body tag that contains no slashes. And then after that, we add the Google Tag Manager no script code right here. So once you or your developer installs Google Tag Manager container snippets on a website, then let's click save. And then let's check whether the Google Tag Manager is working properly. First of all, you can do the right click and then view page source and then click Control F or Command F and enter gtm.js. And if the container snippet has been added properly, you will see one code right here and then the other code right here. But that is not enough. Let's do one more thing. Let's go to Google Tag Manager, click on Preview, and then you will have to enter the URL of your website. Of course, I mean, if you actually are installing now Google Tag Manager on your own website. Later in this course, I will show you how to enter the sandbox URL right here. But right now I'm just going to enter this URL, click start. And if you see the connected widget right here that says connected, and if you see that Google Tag Manager preview mode has also connected right here, this means that Google Tag Manager has been installed properly. So this is how you can install Google Tag Manager on a website where you or your developer has a direct access to the source code of the website. Now, if you are working with some popular content management system or maybe some popular e-commerce platform like WooCommerce or Magento or WordPress, there's a very high chance that someone has already developed a plugin that will help you install Google Tag Manager much faster. If you want to install Google Tag Manager on a WordPress website, I highly recommend that you use Google Tag Manager for WordPress plugin. 
I will post the link to this plugin below the video. So if you have permissions, you can install this plugin onto your website. If you don't, then ask your developers. And once you install the plugin, you will find it under settings and then Google Tag Manager. Click it and then in the Google Tag Manager ID field, you should paste the ID of your Google Tag Manager container, which you can find right here. You can copy it, paste it right here, and then make sure that there are no empty spaces in front of the container ID like this. Then you need to choose the placement of the second Google Tag Manager container code snippet. And where do you want to place it? You can place it in the footer, you can have a custom placement, and then you can choose the codeless injection. Now this one is the most convenient. However, there is a slight chance that it will break your website's front end. So if you want, you can choose a codeless injection, press save changes, then go to your website and check whether everything looks fine. And if some parts look a bit unusual, maybe some elements on the page are missing, then you can quickly switch back to custom, save changes, and all of the problems will go away and uh, you will continue having a proper front end of your website. However, from my experience, usually codeless injection works just fine. So you can definitely try with this one. And if it doesn't work, you can go with custom or you can go with footer. However, if you choose this option, you will not be able to verify your Google Search Console ownership with Google Tag Manager. But if you don't care about that, it's fine to choose the footer option as well. So choose this option, enter your GTM container and click save changes. And from this moment, Google Tag Manager will be installed on your website. As I've mentioned before, if you want to use Google Tag Manager on a website, you, or in most cases, your developer must add Google Tag Manager container snippets to website source code. But in some situations, it happens that you cannot get Google Tag Manager installed right away. For example, maybe a developer is on vacation and he's coming back, let's say after a week. So instead of waiting for a developer to add the code, you can temporarily inject your Google Tag Manager container into any website. Of course, this is happening within the boundaries of your browser, but still you can start working on your configuration. And when a developer comes back, let's say from vacation, all he will need to do or all she will need to do is just publish the container and all of your configuration will go live immediately. So here's an example. I have a website. I don't know. I found it online. It's called demosite.com. In your case, you might use something different. So if I want to inject my Google Tag Magic container temporarily within the boundaries of my browser on this website, all I need to do is that I need to install a Chrome extension, which is called Data Layer Inspector. I will post the link to this page below the video. And once you go to this page, you will need to click Add Chrome, then Add Extension, and you will find a new icon that looks like this right here. This extension does many things. For example, it helps you debug some of the implementations. But in this case, we will be using just one feature, which is injecting Google Tag Manager container. So first, let's go to Google Tag Manager, click on this container ID right here, and then copy the last part of the Google Tag Manager container without GTM dash copy just this part. And then go to your website where you want to inject this container, or in my case, that is demosite.com. And I will click on Data Layer Inspector. Then I will click the checkbox. If it isn't clicked yet, then go to Advanced Options, Add Functionality, Inject Google Tag Manager Container, and paste that second part of the Google Tag Manager Container. This is very important. You should not paste the entire ID right here. GTM dash is already pre-filled. You need to enter the second part of the ID. And right here, you need to enter the host of the website. In other words, the domain without HTTPS, without any slashes, without anything that might come after the domain. In my case, that is just demosite.com. If this website had www.demosite.com, I would need to enter that right here as well. Then click save and reload the page. Unfortunately, nothing happened yet because, well, we need to do one more thing. We need to check whether Google Tag Manager is installed properly. And we can do that by going to Google Tag Manager and clicking preview right here. 
and we will need to enable the preview mode. Then I will enter the URL of the website. In your case, you should enter some your address and then click start. If you see the debugger window right here, I mean the, the window with your website and you see the widget right here that says debugger connected, this is a good sign. So this means that your Google Tag Manager is installed properly. In fact, you can minimize this window, go to that Tag Assistant tab, which says connected, and you can see that there are three page view related events in the preview mode. I will later explain how to use preview mode. And that's how Google Tag Manager should be installed on a website. This video is a part of video series called Google Tag Manager for Beginners. Now let's go to the next lesson and you will find the link to it below the video. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager, I have a free ebook that you can download. It's called Google Tag Manager for Beginners, and I will post a link to that ebook below this video as well. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video because it helps me continue working on this channel. Also, if you want to learn more about GTM or GA4, consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.